Good afternoon. It is September 22nd, 2024. This is the 25th Sunday in Ordinary Time. And the first reading today is one of those things that's very distressful. It's taken from wisdom. And <clears throat> the focal point of it is rather negative, rather dark. Um, if you go to your Bible and you read the following um, uh, passages, you'll realize that it shifts over to the positive. But what we're looking at today is this who is the righteous person? And this is actually a foretelling. It's a prophecy about what is going to happen to the righteous one, which would be Jesus Christ. But it also begs the question of how do we understand what it means to be righteous? And righteous with whom? Are we trying to be righteous with each other? Are we trying to be righteous with family and friends? Are we trying to be righteous in our community? Or are we trying to be righteous with Jesus Christ? And they're not the same thing. Our society expects us to do things in a certain way, but God expects us to do things in a different way. And what he points out is if we are truly righteous, if we're truly doing what is right and true, then we're going to get persecuted for it because people aren't going to like it. And part of being righteous is standing up for the truth. And we have a problem with that because our society doesn't want to hear it. And sometimes our family and friends don't want to hear it either. It's kind of interesting when you look at Catholics, and, and as Catholics, we're all across the board. Um, and we sometimes make references to the fact that we're cafeteria Catholics. You know, I'll believe this, but I'm not going to believe that. I'm, I'm going to believe this, but I won't believe that. I'm going to agree with this, but I'm not going to agree with that. And in many ways, there's a level of tolerance within the Catholic Church for the diverse attitudes and choices. But at the end of the day, we're all going to stand before God and have to answer for how we've approached our life and the choices that we have made. And are our choices righteous? And this then gets into that question of justification, rationalization, relevance. Oftentimes, you catch a child doing something wrong. And I hear this from parents all the time. They catch the kids doing something wrong, and the kid, ch children have thousands of explanations as to why they did it. And very often, not my fault, so-and-so, 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 it's not my fault. Forgetting, of course, that no, you have free will and you get to choose. When I stand before God on Judgment Day and I have to answer for my life, I can't blame it on anybody else. I can blame it on the bishop if I want, I can blame it on my parents if I want. That is not gonna cut it with God, because I made the choice. And the thing is, sometimes it's sort of like, we're dealing with this choice here that's not the problematic choice. It was the one back here 10 years ago. There's the problem. But I made that choice. But it led to another bad choice, another bad choice, another bad choice, another bad choice, and now I'm here. This is not the issue. The issue is back here. And do we recognize that in our lives? And do we take ownership for it? When we stand before the power of God on Judgment Day, we're not gonna be able to blame it on anybody. We're going to have to be able to stand there and say, yes, Lord, you know everything, you know, that I chose that. And I'm willing to accept whatever consequences go with that choice. But that's very, very humbling. But then again, that's another characteristic of the righteous person. Humility. I chose and I accept the consequences of that choice. Too often, we don't want to accept the consequences. We want somebody else to take care of the consequences, or we ignore the consequences completely, right? There are many things in our world today where we don't want to recognize the consequences, or we ignore the consequences, or we pretend there are no consequences. It's kind of like the person who has an abortion. There are consequences. And the thing is, the consequences might not be at the moment, right? But one of the things I was reminded a long time ago is every, con every choice in life, good or bad, has consequences. We have people out there in our world today using MAID, medical assistance in dying. And so they choose to have somebody come in them and shoot them up with something. They make a choice to die. The problem with that is, is there are consequences. Were the people around you able to say goodbye? And where is your humility? Oftentimes that's the they say, well, I don't want to suffer. Well, 
In all my years working in the hospital, I've only ever seen that happen once, where the person was in mental anguish, not physical anguish. There was no physical pain. Their pain was up here. And so they, for lack of better terminology, screamed their way into death. I've been with a lot of people in palliative care. And the thing is, nowadays we have drugs that take care of just about everything. There's no pain, there's no suffering. And most of the time the pain and suffering is in the family gathered around because they don't want to see grandma like that. But all of a sudden we miss a part of life. We take our old people, we stick them in nursing homes and nobody goes to visit them. We take people who are dying and we stick them in a hospice because, well, those people will take care of them and we don't have to be around. There's a problem with that. Life and death, life and death. And of course, when a baby comes into the world, right, everybody's there for the baby, or at least one would hope so. But at the end of our lives, when we become dependent upon other people, are the people gathering around us to take care of us? One of the examples I was given many, many years ago is that the baby that comes into this world needs a great deal of care, needs a great deal of love, and needs to be watched over constantly. At the end of our life, our faculties fall apart, our ability to take care of ourselves falls apart. But who's there to take care of us? And more often than not, we stick it on an institution because the family and the friends are too busy. They don't have time for it. Or it's difficult. And I'll be very honest with you. Yes, it is difficult. But it also is a challenge to look deep inside of ourselves. Where's our compassion? Where's our empathy? Where's our tenderness, our patience, our gentleness, our kindness? our love. Now taking care of a parent is a whole lot different than taking care of a baby. But they do have one thing in common. They're part of life. They're part of what we live with. I always find it very distressful when somebody decides to use maid. I understand the part about saying, you know what, I'm not going to do any more treatment. And that's okay because that's passive. But when somebody says, shoot me up, I want out of here. That's called selfish. And it also doesn't allow people to have closure. But, but I don't want to suffer, Father. I don't want to have any pain, Father. And none of my family wants to wait around to see me go. They're afraid I might spend their inheritance. They're afraid that they might have to take care of me. They're afraid that they may have to give up hours of work to come and visit me, to come and sit with me. The righteous person does what is right. They sit with the dying. They sit with the newborn. They love one another. They care about each other. The righteous person is righteous. They do the right thing, even when the right thing can be very, very hard. It is the 22nd of September, 2024, and it's the 25th Sunday in Ordinary Time. May God watch over you, bless you, and take care of you all the days of your life.